Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Anant Agarwal. I'm the CEO of edX and a professor at uh, MIT. I am joined by Alok Kumar Chaudhary, who is a chief CHRO, the chief human resources officer of the State Bank of India. Uh, it's a top position at the bank, and uh, particularly when the bank has, I was amazed to hear this, 2 lakh 50,000 employees all over the country. All of you have seen uh, uh, state bank divisions uh, in, in all the neighborhoods and uh, uh, towns that you live in. And uh, Alok Kumar is the chief human resources officer for the bank. In this session, we are going to discuss how the future of work is going to evolve and what education and learning has to do in the corporate environment. But most importantly, we will hear and discuss from Alok how he and his team are innovating for learning and development at the State Bank of India. How do you create the motivations to have you know, large pools of employees learn and work? So before we get into that, let me provide you with a quick overview of edX and the future of work and learning. Uh, could I please have the presentation up on the screen, please? Okay, so uh, let me uh, let me go through a few of these important points about the future of work and learning. So first of all, edX is the world's largest learning platform. It is a place, it's a nonprofit founded by Harvard and MIT. In our platform, we have courses and content from some of the top institutions in the world like Harvard, MIT, Berkeley, IBM, Amazon Web Services, IIT Bombay, IIT, um, IIM Bangalore and others who create these contents and programs on edX. And then we have learners, individuals from all over the world learning on our platform, and also corporations from all over the world like State Bank of India. So today we have more than 33 million unique students and corporate learners on our platform. We have more than 1,000 corporations taking programs from edX. And the State Bank of India is one such example. We have uh, 3,000 courses available on our platform that can be used by corporations or learners uh, to learn on our platform. It is not surprising that everything, in, everything is going digital. Tomorrow's learning, whether it's individual or whether it's in the corporate world, will be digital. We are looking for learning to become more personalized, more self-directed learning where people will learn at their own pace. We're expecting learning to become more flexible where people will be learning anywhere, anytime, mobile, uh, on demand, so it fits into busy lifestyles, and connected, where you will be connecting with your peers and colleagues as you are learning at the same time. Now, as we were doing online learning, the world, the entire world was hammered by coronavirus. And this suddenly dramatically increased the importance of online learning, not surprisingly, on edX we saw a 15 times increase in the number of unique people coming to edX to learn, 15 times post-coronavirus. As an example, in the month of April, we had 5 million unique students come to edX to learn, and that was the same number as in all of 2019. So 15 times higher number of people coming to learn during coronavirus. And online learning now, whether in the corporate world or individually, or in universities or campuses has become a complete staple around the world. People are taking courses in all kinds of new areas. And many of these areas are pandemic proof. They are also proof, also resilient to downturns in business. Topics like artificial intelligence, communication, cybersecurity, writing, leadership, computer science, all very important topics. And when we talk with State Bank of India um, and Alok Kumar, their CHRO, you will hear how leadership is very, very important and innovation is very, very important. And people can learn all of that. A typical edX course 
is of course online and the basic methodology is called active learning with active learning you're not sitting in a lecture hall for one hour and listening to a professor keep talking for one hour instead it is very engaging it's called active learning you see short videos 5 to 10 minute videos interleaved with interactive exercises so that you are learning and applying your knowledge at the same time and this makes learning have much better outcomes and this is a proven proven technology data proves it uh, here's a, some results for testing done by MIT brain and cognitive scientists for corporate learning so they did some testing with corporate learners showing them just long videos and compared to what they call interpolated testing or active learning short videos with in interleaved exercises and you can see that the learning outcomes as shown in the bars here for active learning is simply much better for corporate learning than just showing people vanilla videos without the active learning concept for the learner you always need motivations as to why should somebody learn and uh, alok kumar will talk about some amazing innovative techniques that he has put together at the bank push and pull motivations to have people learn one of the pull motivations is certificates when someone completes a course on edx they get a certificate of achievement that they can put on their resume on their linkedin profile they can share with family and friends so here's a certificate attained by amit goyal who heads up uh, our offices in india uh, he has a certificate of achievement from oxford university so sitting in your home in india or in your offices in mumbai you can be earning certificates from top institutions uh, around the world um uh, edx for business is edx's uh, corporate offering and you see some of the amazing corporations from india and elsewhere that are having their employees take our courses state bank of india is one of our biggest partners not just in india but around the world uh our partners include accenture ge goldman sachs uh, these corporates are learning with india tech mahindra is another major learning partner within india the learning outcomes in india are amazing uh we are getting with the right incentives uh in india we're getting a 90% completion rate for moocs and our courses that are being offered we have more than 1000 corporate customers at edx uh more than 1 lakh employees are taking our courses and uh, this number is growing exponentially so why are corporates using our moocs and courses for upskilling what is amazing is that uh, just 3 years ago in a poll 71% of hiring managers did not know what a mooc was a mooc is a massive open online course they did not know what this online course was 71% but 3 years later 100 million mooc learners are self educating for some of the top in demand jobs in the field and coronavirus simply accelerated this trend new credentials are completely changing the game where corporate managers are noticing and are recognizing these new credentials such as micro masters micro bachelors and professional certificates these are being recognized when hiring and making promotions today over 3500 companies are using moocs for hiring and promotions and upskilling and we'll hear more from alok as he talks about that edx has an amazing partnership with the state bank of india we've had an incredible journey over the past uh, the three years we've had uh, 524% year on year growth in uh, the number of learners so it's really exponential at uh, the state bank of india in our partnership uh, with them the top courses being taken are uh, in uh, topics like uh, 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 leadership uh, in topics like uh, communication computer science and business uh, leadership is part of business and uh, these are this is a pie chart of kind of the areas where the courses uh, the courses are so with that i am going to uh, pause my prepared remarks and uh, uh, when we are done i encourage you to visit the edx business service booth uh, the virtual booth of the conference and uh, uh, you can also visit business.edx.org/shrm Uh, to learn more about uh, uh, this business and how you can uh, find out more about us, 
or you can email Amit Goyal, A Goyal at edX.org, if your corporate is interested in uh, working with us to upskill your employees. So with that, um, I am going to transition and uh, 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 please, you can stop the presentation now. Um, I am going to uh, introduce uh, Alok Kumar Chaudhary very briefly again. Alok Kumar is the Chief Human Resources Officer at the State Bank of India. And uh, he has done some amazing work at the bank in creating push and pull incentives to uh, upskill and, and uh, bring a large group of employees, 250,000 employees at the bank, uh, into 21st century learning. So with that, uh, Alok, uh, I invite you to, uh, to make a few remarks to our audience. Yeah, good evening to all the professionals and the descending viewers of the session today. Uh, it's an honor for me to be with you because I know that you all, all are the top most professionals who alone could have invested their time and energy and resources for attending this uh, webinar by SHRM, one of the best in the industry. Uh, I work in the State Bank of India. That's now spoken so many times. So before I delve deep into uh, your, the learning and development work which you do, or the perspective the State Bank of India has, let me create a small canvas for painting out the work we do in the State Bank of India. Say, born in 1806, we create customers, 70,000 saving bank accounts. Uh, it's uh, opening uh, every day rubber branches. And uh, 43 lakh customers we keep with us. They have the trust in us and 32 lakh crore of Indian rupees they have deposited with us as the trust money, which we intermediate in loans and advances. We have around 24% of the banking market share in India. We are there in uh, 32 countries with around 233 offices. We have 22,000 branches in India in the day of all the different geographies from Kargil to Kanyakumari. Uh, with 58,000 ATMs and 61,000 branch alikes, that is the for CSPs, customer service points, which you would be seeing, which is dotting around all the places in the country, uh, internet banking channel and all. So now this customer acquisition, retention, creation of business, doing their payment settlement needs, giving advisories to them, giving capital and debt to them for uh, doing their businesses. This is a huge work which all of us are doing. And then we have CDRs and JVs and um, say associates, which do different kind of uh, banking or, no, or financial functions, so to say. Now, all this, like they say that the business, the basic purpose of business is uh, creating customers and keeping them. So this is done by 250,000 employees. And now these 250,000 employees there is a different kind of context about saying this. These are all employees who are wedded to the bank. They entered the bank at the ease of around 20 to 25 and retire by 60. So we have hardly around 900,000 people who are contractual employees and we come, who work for five, six years with us and then they go. So these uh, employees, they have been managing the bank since 1806. And 1921, we changed to Imperial Bank of India from Presidency Bank. And there in 55, we became a State Bank of India. So initially, what uh, was thought, like all of the Britishers used to come in this at a younger age, and it was found that uh, we required more professional way of uh, recruiting people. So they started recruiting some Indians also in 1921 as professional assistants. Initially, it, uh, alone it was found that the most of the people who enter the bank they are coming from all sort of academic trainings, like say they come from arts, science, commerce, engineering in these days, and uh, law and IT in these days, of course, in those days, arts, science and commerce were the main uh, streams which fed the bank. So they were all new to the banking and it was found that banking is a knowledge and skill intensive profession, which also has a huge element of risk taking at whatever level. You pass a check, there's a risk. You give a loan, there is a risk. You enter into contract with a customer, there is a risk which needs to be understood in terms of the elements of that particular business transaction as well as the regulations and rules prevailing at that particular point of time because trust 
is the major thing which bank has and it can't be there can't be any breach in it so initially it was all in the 19th century and 20th century up to say 1995 or 90s it was basically on the job training people came raw they were given some uh, some task some front line job in the bank and they learned the job and they also had a peer learning with somebody doing another job and another element which was very much prominent in the bank and still is is the rotation aspect after 6 months you the front line man changes to another role after one year an officer changes to other role so uh, uh, say the on the job training coupled with rotation and as well as periodical checking whether this person will be able to shoulder higher responsibilities so that is how the entire training methodology was when it came up with structured the rules and regulations and the different understanding was the bank had it was all codified in book manuals book of instructions and they were all printed and given to branches along with every month some circular instructions the new ones should come and they were the sources of knowledge where people you learn and people used to maybe get themselves updated we find in only 1921 we had some sort of baby steps in institutional training in mumbai when the indians were recruited in officers position thereafter in 1954 we find that around 18 clerks they were given institutional training in calcutta for around 8 to 10 weeks and thereafter we had an explosion of training architecture we now as of now we have 51 training centers which are residential ones and six colleges which we call apex training institutes which are basically uh, uh, say making creating more content training in areas like risk credit uh, analytics it rural banking consumer banking leadership hr so this is the type of training infrastructure we have in 19 up to 1995 98 it was basically a physical mode of learning everything was cyclo style the notes were created they were sent people used to be sent the and it was the dominant form as computers came in it became a common thing in the branches as well as in the houses and some of the people cd roms and pen drives they started taking some space because first time people understood that a solid thing like physical note or a manual could be liquefied into something which is a uh, disseminable at any place it can be used at any point of time and it gave a sense of freedom and choice to the people who consume this kind of information resources so from physical it it became digital in around 95 to say even up to 2004 5 it was digital concept what we found is that people it was become a difficult for people also in the bank to depute people to training institutes we have 4200 uh, i mean uh, capacity for students or the employees every day who could come to the training institutes and have their classes like colleges and uh, we found that there were some um, uh, sort of uh, problems in getting attendance of the employees in the different institutes and one of the the kpas for people was uh, capacity utilization then uh, the, we understood that the problem was different the problem was that people are needed at the branches in the work places and uh, it's difficult for the operating or staff or the business people to send them to training institutes so we found that it has to be more and more digital in this process what happened is that we started creating digital resources which could uh, through the medium of digital they would be disseminated to people and people would learn at their own pace so uh, this has become the major uh, sort of model physical still uh, dominating digital still uh, equally important and robust but corona made a change what happened what you used to think that let us make it all digital corona was the external factor which tested our infrastructure the training infrastructure we had and during this period we digitized all the information sources we had and we used the methods which are now more prevalent one of the methods which we are using now webinars and to tell you uh, uh, the progress which we have made is that during the last 3 months starting from april we have already done around 3000 webinars on different topics 
wherein 91,000 employees they have participated. The webinars could be around one hour, one hour and a half, or a couple of hours maybe. And all the training programs which we had, we are there. So uh, this is how we have done. And the pool and the posts we have uh, in the system which we have created, maybe we in the discussion we'll talk. And what is the model? How are we innovating by design? That also we'll talk in the question answer. But it's all designed as to how we innovate. And for the last 214 years, we have been reinventing ourselves and trying to be relevant to the market and be uh, in the forefront for serving the people of the country as well as wherever the Indian diaspora is. So thank you, Anand. We'll discuss. Uh, thank, you. Uh, thank you for your uh, comments. Uh, so uh, Peter, I have a very quick uh, question for you. Yeah. So uh, you know, State Bank of India, and uh, you have many of your employees uh, using edX content for courses uh, for them. Uh, one of the things I heard was that uh, as you use edX courses, uh, the leadership of the State Bank of India, including yourself, is setting an example for the employees. Uh, can you describe how you are doing that uh, uh, in the bank? See, what we found is that we have uh, three levels of learners in the bank. One is your uh, the contextual learners who want learning immediately because some problem arisen, there's a need to learn. So for them, there's a different content. And then we have aspirational learners who want to grow in the bank. They want to increase the self-esteem by being help to people. And there are the exploratory learners at senior levels. So these exploratory learners they are supposed to bring dynamism and renewal, uh, renewed content from around the world in order to uh, say save the energy of the bank from reinventing the will. So EDX as a partner, we understand it as a beneficial mutagen. You, it's a mutagenic agent because we uh, get to know what the contents are being met and curated by MIT or IMF or many other organizations. And these uh, enable, I mean, uh, widen the horizon of the top management, GMs, the CGMs, the DMDs of my position. We are all supposed to do these courses and bring new insight. So me, myself, say last year, I have done a couple of courses. Year before that, I have done a couple of courses. This year, I have enrolled for, say, a course uh, on cash flow management because what is helping us is that almost all of us in the bank, like from a CHRO position, I will get a shift as a chief business officer or a chief uh, accounts officer or chief risk officer. So our positions are fungible and it is incumbent for us to know about everything what the bank does. So within the same vertical which I'm working, it is incumbent upon me and others who are working in the bank to develop knowledge in other areas. So that oh, this is great. Now, this is fantastic. So it's amazing how from the CHRO uh, throughout the team, you're all leaders taking the courses and setting up a fantastic example for the employees in the bank. Do you, can you share an example of an employee and uh, uh, you know how it has impacted their career? Uh, what are the uh, pull motivations you're creating for your employees to take these uh, online courses? Yeah, so the first thing, how... Courses have helped. Say, let me take an example of ETEX itself. We had a GM who was best in India, but his responsibility was managing the affairs of the foreign branches. So, in one of the bigger branches in Euro area, I'll not take the name. In the Euro area, we had a local, say, joint CEO, and uh, we had uh, Indian people who were working there from the bank on deputation. So, there was suddenly an industrial relations or a say uh, emotional issue at branch where it was found that. The way uh, the local, uh, uh, locally hired person was behaving uh, was not being appreciated by the people here. And so it was becoming a great problem. Uh, there were uh, pressures for dehiring him or firing him, which would not have sent good signals to the regulator there because it would have uh, snowballed into different kind of controversy. So our man here, he had done a course where unconscious biases was a major theme of that course, and he was sent for investigation. When he went there, he found out that this was very naturally, I mean, natural and an accepted way of behaving in that particular con cultural context. And then he called for a meeting of all of them, 
and a sort of cathartic process followed and the entire uh, issue which could have snowballed into maybe a diplomatic issue and you never know because these are very sensitive issues it was smoothly handled so i think uh, we have abundant examples like this almost we are in touch with people who do all sort of courses and we get information from them so it helps uh, not well, that's amazing but uh, that's absolutely amazing and i've also heard that uh, uh, you know also heard that you create push and pull incentives where yeah. the pull incentives are that you uh, and you know uh, the push incentives are that people are going to get promotions and you're going to look at the performance in these online courses for their uh, promotions and uh, and pull as well these certifications and uh, the senior leadership doing the courses we have time just a quick question from the audience yeah with all of this content available uh, for free today uh, you know uh, or, or content available directly to employees on learning platforms why do you think it's important for human resources departments at the bank to be providing learning as part of development for your organization i think it's necessary because you have must have an would be kind of courses available now by human nature you know we are entertainment loving or maybe some of the people who are uh, differently designed mentally but they have to work in an organization like a bank or some other organization so you need people who will sort of give a context as to which learning is important for you for growth and survival and which learning is good for your team so the learning and development professionals they help people choose they also help decide as to what kind of courses are good and they are needed for creating pull and post so that people learn the right kind of courses which uh, takes care of the strategic objectives of the organization like a doctor say if a doctor starts learning uh, courses in pali or prakrit it's good to learn but the very profession for which the profession is built will not exist so there are a lot of courses there no doubt about that and that is why it is necessary that you have plethora of choices you need some filters to give you the right kind of choices for must learning and then you have should be learning and would be learning so this uh, professionals are needed anyway so it's very very exciting to see how you are creating these push and pull incentives for your learners i also appreciate that it is very important as you said for companies to be suggesting to their employees what courses they should be taking and i hear you your point uh, a lot that although content is available you know people can go to edx.org directly and learn but they will choose courses that may or may not be aligned with the organization's uh, incentives and corporate structure and so you want to suggest to employees certain courses that will help them in their careers will help the organization and by creating your push and pull incentives promotion incentives and also creating time for employees to learn uh, by setting an example uh, yourself by the leaderships uh, it's absolutely great so uh, uh, you know i'm really delighted by our partnership with the state bank of india you are setting a innovative example for all the corporations and uh, learning organizations in india uh, i hope that uh, they all take example from you and uh, do the same innovation in their organizations and uh, for the listeners thank you all for joining us um, i would encourage you to go to uh, the business.edx.org/shrm to learn more go to the virtual booth and uh, uh, enjoy the conference uh, thank you again and thank you alok thank, thank you apoorva uh, really exciting to be here yeah thank you very much thank you the audience